Konnichiwa minasan and welcome to Anton in Japan. Thank you so much. Half a million subscribers in less than three weeks. I'm, yeah, I'm in shock, honestly. It's been a crazy three weeks and I'm very excited to make great content for you guys. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the future of Anton in Japan, as well as give you some great advice if you are thinking about starting making content in 2023. I'll also give you a quick Q&A in the end, and I'll also tell you a little bit about two really exciting projects that I have going on for this channel. So please stay tuned till the end, and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. So in this video, I wanted to talk about five things that I learned from starting a brand new account and growing it to 500,000 subscribers in less than a month, actually only 21 days. I'll also give you a Q&A of the most frequent asked questions. I still have a lot to learn and I still need to practice my English a bit. So as you guys probably know, I've done YouTube in Japanese for about two years before starting Anton in Japan. I did it under a channel name called Anton Channel, which is Katakana, basically means Anton's channel. It was mostly about DIY, uh, how I live my life here, and cultural differences. Why does all Japanese people wear umbrellas? Why don't they have double glazed windows? Why do they tear houses down after 35 years? Things that are unbelievable for Western people like me. Obviously this channel was aimed for Japanese speaking culture, but I still got a lot of studying done with this channel. I learned how to edit. I had no idea how to do that. I learned how to post on the different channels. I made other creative friends in the field, which helped me a lot. It was a big studying period and I couldn't have done it without this. With that said, I still wanna give you the strategy that I changed up when I started Anton in Japan. I wanted to start this channel about half a year ago, but I had my house to renovate. I had my real job and I couldn't really focus. Also on my Japanese channel, my posting schedule was, I was supposed to post five or six times a week and it was just very draining. Finding ideas, finding good content, film it, editing, while having your real job and having a full on house, having no money, like where was my priority? Which meant that the videos I pushed out was kind of half-ass in my opinion. Uh, it took off, my channel has still a lot of subscribers and I'm really grateful that I started that journey because without that, I wouldn't be here today. So when I started Anthony in Japan, I finished the house. You will see, I'm working on a big renovation series uh, that I'm gonna post one long video a week on different platforms. But the strategy I used on Anthony in Japan was very different. You don't have to post every day. If the video is good, it will perform. Number one, quality first, not quantity. You see a lot of these gurus there on TikTok, on YouTube. Yeah, post 15 videos a day, post 20 videos a day. Well, you're gonna learn a lot, but quality first, in my opinion. Number two, have fun. I was too stressed in my Japanese channel journey and uh, just having too much to do is not gonna be as fun. Have fun, make quality content about something you're passionate about. Number three, I knew I wanted to show the beauty of Japan to the outside world and I'm very passionate about it. I love living in Japan, I love Japan. Pick a topic you won't get tired of. Number four, stick to that topic. If your channel is about Japan, don't make strategy videos about how to gain followers. This channel is gonna be about Japan, but I just wanted to thank you and show you how I did this. If you're thinking about starting making content. Number five, don't care about the followers. Make the content. A traditional YouTuber is essentially a content creator, right? So why don't diversify? You make a good piece of content and then you just push it up on different platforms. There are so many right now. I had no idea that my Facebook page will take off so quickly quickly and that my Instagram wouldn't, for example. It's the same content. People on different platforms are looking for different things, apparently. I learned that during these weeks. An extra piece of advice, big one. Make reels, make shorts, make a TikTok format video. That's what the algorithm is pushing. And essentially it's the same kind of function on each platform, right? TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's the same. You're scrolling there. What's the difference between the platforms? You tell me. Why is the Facebook real format better than the YouTube one, for example? I edit my videos, I make them high quality, and I think it stands out. If you have any other questions regarding content creation and how I grew brand new channels from zero to half a million followers in less than three weeks, please let me know in the comments and let's get back to my real passion, Japan. And five questions you asked me a lot in the comments. I'll also share a little bit about the future of this channel because I have some really good news. 
Why did you come to Japan? So, uh, I've done modeling in uh, Europe for many years in America and my manager brought me here on a two month contract and I did that once a year and Japan has been the only place in the world where I'm about to leave and I feel like I'm not ready to leave. Uh, it just vibrated with me personally and I asked my manager if I could move here and he said yeah, gambatte kudasai, do your best. We figured out a way for me to move here and it's been four and a half years now. How did you learn Japanese? Very good question. I never really went to language school. I, well, I did, but the language school I went to, I wouldn't really recommend that one. If you're really gonna learn Japanese, you have to be surrounded by Japanese. Not only the language, but the culture itself. I went to acting school in Japanese. The first foreigner to go to this school, I would never do it again. I had a good time, but I wouldn't do it again. Very hard. I learned so much. Not only about the language, but about culture, like crazy Japanese tongue twisters. Um, Namamugi, namakome, namatamago. And some uh, really cool things about Japanese culture. I'll make a video about that at a later point. But just to tell you one thing, they have a crazy Japanese tongue twister. It's over five minutes long. Very famous one. And I'll show you one day, if I still remember. How did you buy your Akia, your abandoned house? So basically, I knew it was abandoned and I live in the area and I approached the neighbor that I also knew, Miss Mari. And Mari gave me the contact information to the owner of the house who lived about an hour away, a very nice gentleman. That's how I got in contact with him. There's a lot of off-market deals going on in Japan and you've been asking me a lot about how to find these properties. I'll make a video about this in the future. I made a video about how I bought the house earlier this week. I'm still editing it and then you gave me the excuse to make this video because I think this is something to celebrate. I will probably make another video about how to buy Akia very soon. Can foreigners buy houses in Japan? Yes, they can. A lot of false comments on different videos. Foreigners can own property in Japan. It doesn't give you a visa though, so be careful. Also be careful with the taxes. But I'll talk about this in a future movie. How can I move to Japan? Very good question. Study the language, study the culture, get a job or apply to a school here would be my best suggestions. This is one of the most asked questions except from all the horror themed questions I got from my most viral video so far. Where's Juon? Where is Sadako? I haven't seen her yet and she won't show up, I believe. So I hope you got a little bit smarter by watching this video. Uh, I still have a lot to learn. I'm not used to talking in English in front of the camera yet. Uh, I studied acting in Japanese. Uh, I did YouTube in Japanese. I work in Japanese. Uh, and I'm simply losing my English a little bit. So this is a great studying method for me as well. Uh, also, my friends and family back home or in the US, they can finally understand what kind of content I'm making. I'm more niche down in Japan houses, modeling and life in Japan at the moment. But if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer you all. I also have some good news for you. I'm working very hard right now. My house is done and I'm putting a lot of time and effort into making good content in English for you guys here at Anton in Japan. And I'm working on two really exciting projects right now. One is called Tokyo Renovation Diaries or Renovation Series. What do you think? What's a good name? Please let me know. Where you'll follow the renovation project of my house. From week zero, you get the keys. This is an abandoned house for 10 years. Things everywhere until the final project, 52 weeks later. So week one, you get the keys. Week two, treasure hunt. Week three, cleaning out. Week four, getting rid of trash. Incredibly expensive here in Japan. And a big reason why there are a lot of akias and abandoned houses in Japan, in my opinion. I'm also working on a travel series that I'm thinking about calling Tokyo Now, the travel guide, where I introduce some great areas of Tokyo to you guys. There's a lot of outdated information about Tokyo at the moment because of the COVID. Japan was basically closed for three years and all the travel advice you get is mostly four or five years ago and a lot of Japanese businesses went bankrupt here. So that's another exciting thing. I'm making content right now, so please stay tuned. I've only done this in three weeks, but I feel a little bit pressure. So please be a little bit patient. I feel a little pressure, but way more excitement in this project. So please stay tuned and let me know if you have any questions regarding Tokyo, Japan, where to visit, what to do, what am I gonna include in my house renovation series? What am I gonna include in the travel series? I'm waiting for your questions down below. And 
I'm thinking about going live in the future as well, doubling down on the content creation, making good content and not just push out tens, 20, because it's fun making a good video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe down there. I'm Tony in Japan. See you very soon.